All right, guys, good morning. Travis and Preston. About to go downstairs to the lobby to meet Javier this morning. Uh, just got done doing a uh, COVID test so I can, you know, make sure I fly back to America. All right, let's see what we got going on. How are everybody doing out there this morning? Oh, no, no, no. So, oh, shoot. As you can see, you got the Travels of Preston shirt on. Go and get y'all a copy of that. You know, I'm going to get you a shirt or two. So today we'll be touring uh, Quito. So he'll just be taking us around some of the sites and see what's going on out there. There you go, Javier right there. All right. <laughs> Ready. Let's go with the carriage over there in the corner, which is here is full. Okay. So we're walking to the car. Yeah, that shit was rough. It was a lot rougher than the last one I had. Until the moment I didn't. Yeah, they um so they did the throat and they did the nose. So yeah, both nostrils. So for example, every week I um because I'm working with tourism, etc. I I made that by by block. Oh wow. Uh, you get all this is taking all this is okay. 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 All right, guys, we're getting in the car. So once we head to where we're going, I'll start recording again. And you see right now, it's really hot, right? Yes. It's really sunny, but cloudy. I I suppose that in a few hours, there will be cloudy everything. Oh, wow. <laughs> cloudy, and for the afternoon, I suppose a little bit rainy. Okay. Yeah. And then sunny again. <laughs> <laughs> So my friend, watch your head here. Okay. The entrance is smaller, okay? Okay. Well, my friend, so right now here we are in the territory of another nationality here in the Amazon rainforest, okay? Okay. Guarani people. So, Guarani, they have their own language that is Guau Tiro. And Guau means people, human. And Guarani means free people. Free human, like my friend. All the time, Guarani are like this, neck. The men use this kind of belt that is called gumi. And gumi is used in order to keep safe their organs together to their bodies. It's because of activities that they have along the day, okay? Okay. Hi guys, nice oh, to meet yes. you. I am Ricardo, it will be your guy. We are talking about a friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Where you come from? Italy. Italy. Yeah. Oh, okay, so we are talking about the Amazon rainforest and the, the nationalities that we have here in the Amazon rainforest. And right now, here we are in the Guarani territory, yeah? I I told that the, um, the Guarani people, the main kind of belt is called Gumi, and the, gumi, the Guarani people use the Gumi in order to keep safe their organs like this, okay? Because activities that they have around the day. They have to collect some products, fruits, uh, they have to hunt from the, deep the forest and also to swim, yeah? And so, Guarani people are um, hunter people, and they use tools like this one. This is the blowgun, yeah? Ooh. And to use the blowgun, the Warren is used a door, like this one, made by natural people as well. And in one top of the door, the Warren is used a substance that is not poison. It's because they have to eat the food, right? They use curari. Have you heard about curari? Mm -hmm. It comes from the maracuri plant, and it's like an anesthetic substance. It's okay. because they have to eat the food, it's just to sleep. 
And in the other cup, they use a piece of cotton to give balance to the door. Okay, oh. so this is spear comes from the palm trees in the Amazon rainforest. The chonta palm tree. And the wood of the chonta is really stronger. That's why this blue gun is not light. It's heavy. Come over here, my friend. Yeah. And try a little bit. Oh, yeah. This is really heavy. <laughs> yeah, that's heavy. If you want to try, come over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. <laughs> so this blower is just for one person. Uh -huh. Really? Many people never carry the blower like this, neither like that. The warning carry the blower like this. Uh -huh. Okay. All the way along. And when the warning is ready, put the blower on like this. Just one person. Take the blower and take a day, take a deep breath. Like a, and then really stronger. <coughs> blow really stronger. How far can the dart go? With this one, uh, five meters. Five meters. This one, yeah. this one. But with the large one, the, they got ones bigger than this. This one is the yeah. This one is the smaller one. Wow. They are bigger than this. And also spears. This one or like this. Let me do the sensor. Okay. So also this one is a real spear of Wallace. And the spear also has two tops. This one is the plain one, and this is used for animals as well. And this one is the saw one, and this is used for enemies oh. to protect uh, their assault. Yeah, it's because they have to damage the enemies, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the anacondas are really important and special for the Warani people. They respect a lot the anacondas. The anacondas represent one of the gods for the Guarani people, and also Guarani all, all the time feel afraid from Anaconda. They keep distance with Anaconda, they feel afraid all the time. Yeah, mm. it's not Anaconda. Well, here there is an Ecuadorian map, and this line is the limit between Peru and Ecuador. Okay. And to have a reference, here we are, Quito. And all of this area, all of this region, is the Amazon rainforest. Guaranis are here in the Yasuni National Park. That is in the province of Napo province, Tucumbillos province, Orellana province, and Pastaza province. Okay? Remember Shuar uh, people, the shrunken head people? Mm -hmm. So there are another kind of community that is called Shuar people. Shuar is over here, on the southern, some more in Chipe province, uh, more on the Santiago province, and Pastaza province as well. Okay? Well, over there, there are a few photos of a traditional day in the Guarani community. They are still living like this. No day. Wow. No day. Okay. Really impressive, right? Really Which impressive. one is impressive for you? For me? You yeah, I must say, yeah, yeah. that one. Yeah. So, maybe it's because I will try, I'm trying to compare all the tiny Guarani with that. So, for example, we use the shoes um, every single day, right? So we use our feet in order to walk, to run, sometimes bicycle, no more. The Guarani never use shoes. They use the feet in order to climb the trees, go deep in the forest, to swim, and so on. So our feet, like this. Guarani feet, like this. Oh. It's really impressive, right? It's like an evolution. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, uh, my friends, do you happen to have the ticket? The, the white one? Yes, so we have. Okay. okay. Uh, so, guys, do you happen to have any question? No. No question? Okay. So, watch your heads and continue this way, okay? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. People out here shrinking heads. And out here, bucket naked. Wow. So, this one is the real house of the Warani people. They came here a few years ago in order to build this house. 
They brought their own materials, like the branches in the world, which is called Ungurawa. Ungurawa comes from the palm tree in the end of the branches as well. It's very strong. The palm what is it there? And while we're walking, make sure that you pause and hit the like button. And don't forget to leave a comment at the end of the video. Okay, uh, while well, we left the jungle, and here we are in the uh, height of the game. And so here in this territory, long time ago, more than a thousand and a half years ago, there was a real special community here. Hitukara people. Hitukara Gap as the actual name, Hito. So Hitukara is called Safiki. Safiki means the real language. And Kito means the real middle of the war. Yeah, Kitukara knew that they were here on the line. And I will show you how over there. First of all, this is structure was called Tola. And Kitukara uh, used the Tola for two reasons. The first one for rituals. And when the Kitukara wants to use this for rituals, the top was better. It's because they had to go up and make the ritual. And the other one is like this. It's still one. Like a small mountain. The funeral Tola. Kitukara is believing life after death. That's why they bury the relatives like a fetal position and then put inside of these clay vessels. Yeah, the clay vessels represent the maternal womb when the mother is pregnant. It's because they thought that they will go to reborn to other lives. And in the other life, they will need their belongings, like the clothes, like the tools. Also, they will need food and drinks, and they put food and drinks in the spot. Also, money. The currency of this age was the fondue shell. Also, the Kitukara people used the cocoa beans like a money in order to make exchange with different communities that came from the Amazon rainforest and also from the Pacific coast. And also, they used the same way in order to export their products, like the cocoa beans as well. So, have you heard where the cocoa comes from? It comes from here, from Ecuador, and here was the first place where the people started to use the cocoa like a chocolate. So, I have read some web pages on the internet that told us uh, that the cocoa comes from the Central America and also from the southern of the Africa. But the real information is that the cocoa comes from here, from Ecuador. So, in the 2007 year, there was a real special meeting with scientists that were to the um, solar of the Amazon rainforest here in Ecuador to the Samora Chinchito province in order to study this about this okay so in the Samora Chinchito province there was a real special community a long time ago as well Mayo Chinchipe community and they found many vessels and inside of the, uh, the vessels had the cacao shape yeah inside of these vessels they found a substance and with the carbon 14 proof the result was that the substance was chocolate Mm. and came from more than the five thousand and a half years ago here in Ecuador. Yeah. Mm. And then for example they made the change with communities here in the Highlands and then with the Pacific coast. And on the Pacific shoreline of Ecuador, the Valdivia community uh, take this these cocoa beans, carry the cocoa beans to other places like the center of America. They made many exchanges with communities in the center of America uh, and the, in the communities over there spoke Nahuatl and they got for the first time the name like a Socolato mm. in Nahuatl language. That's why nowadays in Spanish it's like a chocolate okay. or in English it's like a chocolate. Chocolate. Yeah, like that. We wrote just a review, <laughs> a small review. So all of this area it's really special. That's why there are many totems here around. All of the totems are red, which um, comes from the Latin America community, except for this one. This one? This one, yeah, it comes from French. French. Yeah, French. French. Donate a couple of years ago and represent the cultural interchange, uh -huh. the cultural relationship between French communities and people only. Okay? This one? Nacarigua Venus from Venezuela. 
I represent oh, the female power man. Okay. Como vertir guy. Have you ever seen this before? Yes. Yeah. Squid hole. <laughs> <laughs> so, Easter Island, right? Yeah. Why? From Chile. Megalithic expert from Costa Rica. Uh, Saint Augustine from Colombia. Oh. And yeah, 100% the male power man, the big cat as well. Ah, also Titi from Hawaii, this one. Here, Uruguay, and behind of this Argentina, the big fellow. Argentina. And over there. The strong one comes from the center of America, Mexico. Atlante de Tula. And with the pyramid, represent the Toltec communities, okay? So here, Apu Amaru from Ecuador, from the highlands of Ecuador. Okay. And over there, the stone, the wooden ones wall comes from Ecuador as well, from the Pacific coast, represent the communities over there. Yeah. So right now here we are in the latitude zero zero zero, and this language measured by the satellite, military satellite in the two thousand year. Okay. So this one is the actual one, and if you want, you can have some photos here. Okay. If you want, I can take the photos for you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, and yeah. uh, um, the indigenous people, the Kitukara people, use the shadow of this stick in order to know the real season. Yeah. So first of all, no one showing us the cardinal location like north, south, east, and west. In Spanish, it's Oeste. That's why here is the O. Uh, yesterday, a friend of mine told me that this is the other E. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's the West, okay? So, North Hemisphere, South Hemisphere, yeah? Can you see the shadow of the stick? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where the shadow is? Which hemisphere? To the South. Southern one, right? Wow. The shadow represents cold season. That's why here, on the Southern, winter time. While on the North, summer time. It's because the sun is over here, right? So, a few months ago, a couple of months ago, on the June the 21st, there was a real special celebration for the whole world, right? Solstice Day. Have you heard about Solstice Day? Yes. Solstice is occurred twice a year, right? June the 21st and December the 21st. In the next one, it will be the opposite. The sun will be over here and the shadow will be reflected on the north side. On the north, right? So, that means for the north, winter. And for the southern, summer. It's because the sun is moving among the both hemispheres twice a year. Equinox. Ah, Pajaro Brujo, the red one, is like a witch bird. Oh. Yeah. Also. So, uh, as I told you, it's because the sun is moving among, uh, among the both hemispheres twice a year. Equinox. Have you heard about equinoxes? Yes. Yeah? Occur twice a year, March the 21st and September the 23rd. When there are equinoxes, it's easy to see the sun moving among the body hemispheres. And at the noon, the light of the sun is falling straight down here. <laughs> That's why here on the line, the shadow. No shadow. No shadow. Disappears for almost three minutes. Ooh. Yeah? Indigenous people. To Kara people and knew about this, yeah. Hmm. And to prove this, uh, in the top of the earth, there is a volcano, Kanyambe volcano. Kanyambe is 5,790 meters above the sea level, and it's the unique one that is across by the equinoxial line at the altitude of 4,700 meters in the surface of the sea. And just there, the Kitu Kara people, indigenous people, build a structure, Puntia Chil. And then a few kilometers in the west direction, other one that is called Kochaski, and so on. All of this on the line. Clever people, right? So this calendar is divided by four different colors, four different seasons. The blue one, the real time to walk. Green one, tender grass. Yellow one, time to harvest. And red one, time to rest. It's like a Thanksgiving here. Yeah, okay. party, party, and party, yeah, but just in order to celebrate your heart, okay? Okay. So, uh, can you see these points? Yeah. Represent the constellation. So, from here, from the equinoxial line, it's easy to see all of this constellation. The Southern Cross, Orion's Belt, and the Big Dipper, yeah? So, uh, 
uh, for example, for the people that is in the solder, mm. Argentina, for example, it's not possible to see this one. And also, from the people that is in Quebec, for example, it's not easy to see this other one, right? It's because here we are in the latitude 000, 000, 000 on the equinoxial line, far away from everywhere, it's easy to see all of these constellations. Well, uh, so this one is the sundial. And it's working like this, yeah, with the stick and with the shadow. Yeah, but this is the smaller one. The bigger one is over there. 